CE4260. We're going to finish our section on serviceability by talking about cracking. We're going to go over some observations, um, some historical development about cracking, and then we'll end with ACI provisions for controlling cracking. And really, uh, for those of you who are practicing in the US, uh, that's all you'll need to know. And at the very end, I'll just show you some work that some students are doing in Japan that has to deal with cracking. So first of all, some observations about cracking. Deformed bars help uh, beams to not crack. You can imagine that as the tension face uh, stretches. If you have reinforcement in there that's deformed, it can keep the cracks closed. High stress in the steel leads to more cracking. That also makes sense. The bars that are highly stressed will elongate more and therefore the concrete surrounding it will crack more. And the closer the bars are to the surface of the concrete, the smaller the cracks. That makes sense as well. If the steel is preventing the cracks from getting large, if they're close to the surface, the cracks on the surface will be smaller as well. And more smaller bars as opposed to fewer larger bars leads to less cracking. Again, so that, again that makes sense because these bars will, uh, uh, there's more of them, so they'll be closely spaced together. They'll be, the spacing will be less, and so uh, there will be less cracks at the surface of the concrete. And so based on this, um, the original way of estimating crack widths came from something from Gurgley and Lutz. And they came up with an equation that would predict the crack width in inches that you see there. And uh, you can see the variables defined there. Beta is the distance to the steel closest to the face. Uh, the ratio of that distance from the neutral axis to the bottom face. And so that's a measure of how close those bars are to the external surface. There's the steel stress in the steel, as we talked about. And this A, which is um, the effective area per bar, uh, it's the area of concrete around the center of these bars. Um, it, it gives you an idea of how much concrete these bars are holding together. And if, and this C value is given there. And previously in the ACI code, this was implemented in a, a Z. They left out the C and beta H. And uh, and then there were provisions for Z, and if you were below a certain Z value, uh, you could be um, sort of confident your cracks would be small. And this is D sub C and A in those equations. Uh, A was just the amount of concrete per bar and the concrete that centers around the centroid of the steel. And D sub C is a, that uh, what we've been taking is two and a half inches from the, the bottom of the beam to the center of the first row of bars. Uh, <clears throat> and using the Gurgley and Lutz equation, ACI, oh, I, I can't even remember the years now, it's probably early 80s, uh, came up with this. And if your Z was less than 145 kit per inch, you are okay. But this equation is no longer in use, and this is an old example that I, I posted, um, and uh, we, we, we no longer use this. Uh, one key thing, though, is that it's difficult to calculate the stress in the steel, and so back then you were allowed to use 60% of FY as an estimate of the stress in the steel, and there's a holdover of something similar to that in current ACI provisions. Here's another equation developed by other researchers that was proposed. And so, you know, when you have uh, multiple researchers proposing different equations, especially when, uh, I'll show you the graph, these equations actually do different things. The curves are almost opposite, uh, you'll see in a little bit. You wonder, uh, which of these is right, Gurgly and Lutz, or Frosch, or none of the above. And it's sort of none of the above, or we don't know. 
the current ACI code provision, so this is what you need to know for practical design in the US. Um, instead of predicting crack widths, uh, all we're doing now is if you can keep your spacing less than the spacing uh, given out by this equation, uh, you can rest assured that uh, the cracking uh, will be under control. And in this equation, there are three variables, S, the spacing. So that's the maximum spacing of the steel that's near the surface of your concrete. Uh, Fs is that uh, stress in the steel, which again is difficult to calculate. And remember in the Gurgley and Lutz equation, you could approximate that with 0.6. In this equation, you can approximate it with two-thirds Fy, uh, 0.67 Fy. And C sub C is the clear cover to the bars, the distance from the outside of the concrete to the nearest surface of the steel. And that also is an uh, indicator of how close the steel is uh, to the surface of the concrete. And if you compare the gurgly lutz frosch and this equation together, you get something like this. And see what I was saying about how the equations sort of do different things. And the solid line there, uh, this is a plot of bar spacing uh, and clear cover. And th these are uh, the ACI equations for different uh, amounts of steel stress. And uh, just some comments about this. Larger bars will have bigger cracks, okay? Just remember that uh, when, you're, when you're doing these things. And if you are really wanting to make something watertight or you're making a tank that has aggressive exposure, don't rely on this equation. Um, maybe consider uh, looking into some research or perhaps even pre-stressing to keep the cracks small. Um, and in T-beams, this steel uh, in the negative moment, you distribute over the width of the flange. And this steel to prevent cracking in the flange, um, it's, you distribute it over the width or the length over 10, whichever is smaller. Okay, and so that that's the crack controlling steel. And past outside this length over 10, if you have some width that goes beyond L over 10, use your discretion, but essentially use, uh, the code recommends using the minimum uh, shrinkage steel for out there. One last thing to consider for cracks. Um, this has to deal, these equations have to do with putting steel in the bottom here, okay? So if you're putting steel in the bottom tension face of the beam, uh, you'll control cracks on the bottom surface. But if you have a beam that's very deep, like over three feet, uh, there's one and a half feet, uh, the bottom half of it, that could be in tension. And if you have steel only on the bottom edge face of the beam, there will be cracks on the side. Okay, so there, let me see. Uh, there will be cracks on the side um, going up, sort of uh, like tiger stripes. And we call these uh, skin cracks coming up. And you need to put steel over the bottom half of the beam if the bottom's in tension. Okay, and uh, you put it on both sides, and the spacing is given by this same equation here, the one, the one we've been using. Okay. How much steel? The code actually does not specify, it, and it says um, uh, the amount of steel you put in is not as important as the spacing of the steel. So what to do? If you look at the commentary in the code, it says uh, we don't tell you how much, but traditionally, uh, the bar at this spacing S, um, you can use anything from a number three to a number five. And you're allowed to use these things to calculate. Uh, they add steel to the beam. And so you can use them to calculate the strength of the beam. As long as you do a strain compatibility analysis, what they mean is um, the strain near the neutral axis is small. And so many of those bars over the bottom half of the beam, especially the ones near the neutral axis, will not be yielded. And so you're going to have to use similar triangles and strain diagrams and that sort of stuff.
What also is done is welded wire fabric. That's not the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. It's welded wire fabric. You've seen it. Uh, there are bars that, um, there are wires that are welded together in square meshes, four to six inches uh, squares. And uh, they tell you how many square inches per foot. And if you can get uh, welded wire fabric, fabric with 0.1 square inches per foot, of depth of beam, uh, you can put those in both sides of uh, the faces of these deep beams. But a summary of all this, what you really need to know is that uh, if you want to control cracks, just make sure your bars are spaced less than given in this equation. And uh, F sub S is the steel in the stress, and if you can't bother to calculate that you can use two-thirds fy for that and c sub c is the clear cover that's it you just really this is the one thing you need to know for controlling cracks for serviceability now my work in japan i, w I work with students that uh, um, are, are very interested in crack patterns because it's an indicator of the performance of uh, members that uh, undergo seismic cycles and this is uh, an experiment that was done there uh, these are very very large piles and you can see the photos of the piles on the right and uh, this photo is small but they track the crack patterns uh, quite closely in these and what's fascinating is that this student then used a nonlinear uh, finite element program to model these and uh, you can see even modeled the loading bands and those are modeled as rigid and actually there are contact elements that allow for friction between the loading bands and a concrete pile. And this program will actually uh, predict uh, cracks and um, it's a cyclic loading and the loading goes like, uh, let me see, get in there, it goes like this and then like this and uh, uh, the black, uh, cracks are the cracks that open on one cycle um, that would be this way oops it's a mirror image that would be I can't do it this way for the black cracks and the light blue cracks when it goes like that and it, it's quite fascinating and the general trend of horizontal cracks in that specimen PHC 19 from the final element program sort of matches the photo and it's hard to see in this photo but in PHC 18, there are a whole bunch of uh, diagonal shear cracks and flexure cracks near those loading bands. And that's what happened uh, in the experiment. So this is pretty fascinating work modeling the cracking uh, in, in these specimens. And it's just sort of the kind of work uh, that I help with in Japan. Anyway, that concludes our serviceability segment for our class. And next uh, will be the final uh, packet of uh, lectures, and it will be on columns, short columns. Okay.